Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of Amber's Apron. I had recently asked if you all had suggestions to hit me up, and someone requested meatloaf. So, actually, it was on my list to do. Um, we're having meatloaf for dinner tonight, so this entire episode is going to be our dinner. We're having meatloaf, mashed cauliflower, I know, keto, but it's still good, and fried green tomatoes. It's not really keto, but they're good, and I have some. <laughs> so let's get started. For my meatloaf, I have two pounds of ground beef, um, which is like the 85-15, 85-lean-15 fat, I guess. Um, and then I've already cut my peppers and my onions, um, and this is a scratch recipe. So what I'll do is I'll post it in the description like usual. Um, because I honestly can't tell you what all I've measured and what I haven't. So I've got my meat. I'm just going to dump in my bell peppers. And then I'm going to add my onions. And trash these. Okay. Now what I've done, because the recipe calls for one cup of breadcrumbs, and we're trying to do keto, I've gone ahead and I've ground up my pork rinds like I did in an earlier episode. And I measured about half the cup, and then I've dumped a little bit of um, regular breadcrumbs over top of them and on the counter. Gracious. We're starting off, starting off hot and heavy, y'all. Buckle up. <laughs> and I'm just going to add a little bit more. These are just the um, plain breadcrumbs from Food City <laughs> down the road. <laughs> this kind of makes me mad. Like... Man, I can't believe I did that. Golly gracious, right out the gate, too. So if you happen to do that, just break it off. It's fine. No big deal. Nobody will see it. Nobody. Um, and then I've got my seasonings here. This will be in the description. Um, and I just have a mixture of stuff. Salt, salt, pepper. I did add a little bit of smoked paprika because lately I've been on that kick where I've been like, Smoked paprika is the bomb. So anyway, that's what I've added. Now, the recipe calls for a tablespoon, I think. Yeah, a tablespoon of tomato paste and a tablespoon of Dijon. You know what, don't quote me. I could be wrong, but I'm gonna add a tablespoon. Cause I want, yeah, this is Milo. See how I wing it? Look at this. So I've got my tomato paste, and I like this kind. I don't know, have y'all tried this? As I make a mess. Amore tomato paste. I like it because it's not in a can, and I can just pop the lid back on, and it's like toothpaste, and it's good until 2023, <laughs> which I'll use this long before then. Good gracious. Um, and then, like I said, it calls for a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And y'all, I, my mom, I was raised eating the um, meatloaf seasoning packet, like McCormick, and it's fine. I just like this. I like to do um, scratch recipes. Sorry, grabbing my little scraper over here. Um, I like to do scratch recipes just because, I don't know, they taste better. They taste like you put a little bit more effort into it or, I don't know, you made it with love. That's what, that's what my husband always says. You made it with love. And actually, I'm trying to be quiet. That feral child that I'm raising, he is sound asleep right now. So I'm trying to be a little quieter so I don't disturb him because when he's awake, he is wide open. And then you use a tablespoon of Worcestershire, 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 of the sauce, Worcestershire. I never know how to say it. My son and I make fun of each other by saying it. Um, and this is not, I know I told y'all I don't measure. This is actually a two tablespoon cup. It's what I could find and I thought, oh, I'll just half it. But that was a little bit more. It'll be fine. It tastes fine. No big deal. You know what? I'm going to use my bigger and then two eggs okay now we typically use 
um, farm fresh eggs because my uncle and my papa have chickens. But I want you to know somebody brought me some duck eggs today. And I'm really excited. I can't wait to try. I've never had duck eggs. It sounds weird, but good, I guess. You want these to be beaten before you put it in there because if you put them in there and you try to like beat it, it's just not. It takes so much longer and your hands get yuckier. But these are the chicken eggs, not the duck eggs. I'm gonna surprise my family with those. And I'm just adding my beaten eggs, two of them. And the idea of that is just, it's gonna hold everything together because you're making meat loaf, not a meat spread. Oh, <laughs> that was a terrible joke. Um, it calls for milk. I use buttermilk because buttermilk is bomb. And I'm going to measure this. It calls for, oh, you know what? It calls for half a cup. I'll just wing it. I'm just going to add oh, about half. Yeah, that's fine. Gosh, I don't have it all together today. You know why? It's because I've been getting everything together to cook. Um, like, when I make it, and I'm not on camera, I just make it. I just go through everything, and I just make everything I need to, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like hectic. But when I record, I try to set it all up and make it look presentable, and I don't want it to be messy or, you know. I want it to look pretty legit. And um, that's what I've been doing. I've been running around getting my cauliflower ready, and I actually made my little granny and pop off some mashed potatoes because they're not doing keto. And... I got all my stuff together for my fried green tomatoes. I don't know if you can see it. See my, my metal bowls over there? So I've just been running around looking at recipes and trying to get all my seasoning, seasons mixed together. And Golly gracious, I'm not with it. Thank goodness I have copy and paste, right? So I can just paste that recipe right in there. And it calls for... Um, some fresh garlic. I've actually got a little bit of garlic powder in my seasoning, but I've added um, some fresh garlic. I'm not going to tell y'all measurements anymore because I could be wrong. Thank the Lord. That vent just went off. Did you hear that? Could you hear? I don't know if you could hear it because I have this little microphone here, but my gracious, I have a gas stove. So anytime I cook with gas, the um, if I don't turn the vent on, it will come on by itself. Which is fine if I want it on. But when I want it to be off, holy cow. Now, this is not what southern women do. But I'm going to tell you, I get tired of picking this meat out of, from under my fingernails. It's gross, and I don't like the way it feels. So I'm going to put gloves on. I'm going to take the easy way out. And I'm... Um, so this is what it's going to look like. And y'all, y'all know I make a mess. See, it's a big old mess in there. So I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to work it up. I don't even know how to describe it. You know, Mom, I don't even remember what it was. I was Oh, the pimento cheese. I was doing the swish and smoosh or whatever. This is just, it's all wet and just got to get it all mixed up. And I don't know if you saw me try to um, scrape that mustard out of my measuring spoon, but I have a little bit of mustard over here on this scraper. I'm going to slide it across there when I get some of this mixed up. I used to not like meatloaf growing up. I, oh, I hated it. It was so gross. But when I got pregnant with my oldest, I craved it. Oh my goodness, I craved meatloaf and milk like it was going out of style. So I started making it, and I really like this recipe. Because it's savory, it's not too, I don't know, ketchup y. It's not like, sometimes you eat it and it just tastes like, <laughs> almost like a hamburger. Like it's just meat and ketchup. And uh, I like to add all these flavors in here. You know, I hope y'all like to do that. Sometimes I, just like this recipe, it doesn't even call for smoked paprika, but I have been on a kick. Oh my goodness, I've been adding that to almost everything here lately. I even added some to my fried green tomato mixture. <laughs> I love smoked paprika. Just lately though, man, it's, it's got a good flavor. And it adds, 
that's just something. You know, you always have food that somebody's made and you're like, there is something in here I can't figure out. That's what, I'm gonna steal that, put that back in there. That's what smoked paprika does. Now I am just, I don't know, squishing it and squishing it. Because I wanted everything to be incorporated. The breadcrumbs and the pork skins, those are gonna, um, you know, act as like binders, so like hold it together into a loaf. Even though I'm gonna put it in a loaf pan, it's still gotta hold together. And then I've got the bell pepper and the onion and all those spices and seasonings. Oh, man, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be so good. And actually, so the recipe that I'm gonna post, it has um, in the description, it has this, it's not just ketchup. You mix ketchup and Worcestershire sauce together and brown sugar. Man, it is so good. That brown sugar, when you like put it in the oven, it kind of crystallizes on that meat. Oh man, and it's not too sweet. The um, Worcestershire, <laughs> y'all, I'm not even playing. The Worcestershire sauce, um, you know, kind of helps offset it and it gives it that kind of a beefy flavor, if that's how you want to describe it. Oh man, it just makes really, really good. But there's so much sugar in ketchup already that I shan't be doing that today. Because let me let me tell y'all, my goal was to lose 30 pounds by um, this time. I mean, really, my goal was to lose a lot more before now so I could wear my bikinis at the beach. And y'all, I did. I wore those bikinis at the beach and I didn't even care. Those people didn't know me and I don't know if they were looking at me because I didn't make eye contact, but you know what? I felt just fine. And one time I got, I got knocked down and that's the day I decided to wear the real skimpy one that I had no business wearing in the first place. And the waves knocked me down and y'all, it took my top with it. And there I stood up and my pants were down. I was trying to pull my pants down. I had, I had one, one of my little girl areas covered up. I'm trying to pull my pants up. And I didn't realize the other one had plopped out from under the string, like the, the bikini string. <laughs> it had plopped out and there I was. Oh, it was, I was mortified. And those were some strong, <laughs> those were some strong waves that day. Anyhow, so my game plan, I really wanted to lose 30 pounds by now because me and my girlfriend are going to Las Vegas. Y'all, I'm so excited, I can't wait and I made it to 25 so I feel like I feel like that's good you know like I, that's good that's better than not you know but still one day one day I'll be down to 30 pounds okay y'all what I'm doing now this pan I don't know if y'all have anything like this or not this comes in handy so much for me this is an old 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 pampered chef pan and it's got four loaves in it and I use this a lot um sorry my bangs I should pull my bangs back I use this a lot at Christmas time because I cook a lot of food for people I bake a lot of stuff and recently I have taken a liking to making meatloaf in here because if we made this if I made this much meatloaf for my family of four we would have leftovers for days so what I do is I section my meat see how I've I mushed it, I mushed it all together. And I separated it into fours, just like, you know, in elementary school when you had your fractions. And I'm gonna take it and pat it in each one of these little loaves. And then I'm gonna give my little granny and papa one, and then we will eat one tonight. And then I'll have two, and I can put those in the freezer. They're already cooked. And then, um, that's gonna make noise, sorry about that. And then um, just get them out, you know, if I get home late one night and I don't have time to cook or if we want meatloaf or whatever, I've already got some made. Isn't that cool? I do that a lot. With any kind of food that freezes well, meatloaf especially freezes very well. But I'm just going to bake it. It'll make these little loaves. And then after it's cooled down, I'll just take it out of this pan and I'll put it in a Ziploc bag. <clears throat> Now what I do is I'll put it in a Ziploc bag and I'll kind of roll it up to squeeze the air out of that Ziploc bag. 
and then I'll put the other loaf in a Ziploc bag just like it and then I'll put them both inside of a Ziploc bag and try to squeeze as much air out as I can just you know to make them taste fresh I'm always real worried I've never I don't think I've ever like cooked with meat that's had freezer burn but I've always been worried about it like it just seems like a you know cringy moment so I don't want that to happen so anytime I freeze food that I've already cooked I will do that and y'all my fractions weren't even much like they were all through school because y'all I'm terrible at math terrible which is funny because I've I work with our company's costs and pricing and I don't know why that's happened to me but <laughs> I'm terrible at math so I'm just gonna pat this one out and any leftover scraps I have which mostly just looks like onions I'm just gonna push them in y'all I can't wait to eat this this is gonna be so good this out now all I'm gonna do I'm gonna take these gloves off and now I don't have to pick out anything out from under my fingernails that's like the worst part of this because these little pieces of meat get stuck in your nails oh gross I hate that it feels gross too it's all mushy I hear my little boy waking up so this is the perfect time so I am gonna put this in a 400 degree oven <laughs> Hi, baby. Hey, hold on just a second, okay? I'm going to put these. Hey, brother's downstairs, but daddy's in there. You want to go get daddy? No. No? <laughs> He's awake and raring to go. Um, I'm going to put these in a 400-degree oven, and um, then when I come back, y'all, we'll start on the mashed cauliflower and fried green tomatoes. All right, y'all. This part is now for those who are looking for healthier options to mashed potatoes. So for all y'all skinny folk, y'all can just skip through this and make your mashed potatoes at home because that's what's gonna taste better. But these are still good. You just have to get used to them. And that is mashed cauliflower. This was a whole, oh, it doesn't have the price on it. I'm just gonna tell y'all how expensive this was. <laughs> so last, last time, I don't wanna say last week, this was a few weeks ago. Last time I was going to do a video on um, just doing mashed cauliflower because it's wet and I have a trick to make it thicker like mashed potatoes because that's what I'm looking for. Um, and y'all, it was like $3.99 and it was, it was like that big. It was this tiny, tiny little head of cauliflower and I was like, I can't do a video on that. That's crazy. But I want to show y'all how to clean the cauliflower because I was completely flabbergasted the first time I bought this. Because I was thinking it was going to be like broccoli and I just needed to cut the little ends off. It is not like broccoli. It is like cabbage. There's a core in it and you just, you can't even break them off. So what I do first is, y'all can see this good, yeah. Um, this is the core and if you've dealt with cabbage it's a bear to get out and I don't want to cut too much because I don't want to lose any of my cauliflower I pay, I paid really good money for this so I don't want to lose these little pieces I'm just gonna put that in my colander um, and the reason I have this sitting here like this is because I've already cleaned and cut one and it's in my pressure cooker so I'm doing this I'm gonna make a big batch so that way my husband can warm this up when I'm in Sin City, y'all. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to go. We leave in just a few days. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. So if you kind of shave some of that off, you can see it's got a core just like cabbage does. So what I do, and probably you should take a smaller knife. I'm just used to cooking with these that I just kind of stab in there. Get my anger out while maintaining safety um, and what I'm doing is I'm kind of cutting these little I don't want to call them twigs whatever those things are because I want to I want to see where my florets really are florets Isn't that fancy 
So you can kind of see, you get an idea. So you can just kind of take it, cut them just a little bit at a time. And you can leave it in these big old chunks. That's fine, because that pressure cooker, it's gonna pulverize them. Just kind of take it apart, throw it in there. There's a few little chunks. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just gingerly chopping away at this head of cauliflower. So back six years ago, my, the company I worked for, I actually worked at um, our corporate office to the company I, I work for now. So I still work for the same company, but six years ago, they had, they had some new business and they sent a lot of us to hospitals to help with that, with this whole conversion. And so I was told I would be going to a hospital, but I definitely would not be going to Vegas. And I most definitely would not be going with my girlfriend, Hillary. Never in a million years. We were not going together. We would not go to Vegas. And lo and behold, we ended up at Vegas together for like, it was a short trip. So maybe like three days, maybe two, I don't remember. Um, and what we would do, y'all, we would work at this hospital during the day. And then at night, <laughs> that's when we would go like see Vegas. Cause that's really when it's prettiest is at nighttime. And we had the best time y'all. We, we were told last minute. So it was pretty much just a few weeks before the trip that we could go. And so we were like, we got to see Britney. We got to see Britney Spears. This was when she had made um, Las Vegas, her like residence or whatever. And she had a show going on. And we were like, we have to get tickets to Britney. And she was not there that, that set of days we were there. I don't even want to say week, just a few days. And so we could not get to see Britney. But we found the next best thing, drag queens. We went to this drag show. Y'all, it was the best thing ever. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna rinse these. <laughs> Y'all hang tight. I'm just gonna rinse this cauliflower. And I think y'all can see me. Yeah. Oh, Lord, y'all see my butt. Lord, don't look at my butt. It's the biggest thing on me other than my mouth. I'm just going to add these big old chunks in here in my pressure cooker. Now, this is the, um, the Ninja Foodie, which is part uh, pressure cooker, part, part Instapot, part, um, what is that thing called? Air fryer? And I hardly ever use the pressure cooker because it scares me to death but I use the air fryer all the time for anything and everything now I don't know can y'all see this sucker here let me take it out this sucker is heaped full of cauliflower look at that y'all don't have to do two heads of cauliflower y'all can just do one and depending on um, how much cauliflower you have you do between a quarter cup and a half a cup of water I'm gonna do a half a cup I keep my little measuring cups by the sink. I'm trying to hide my butt from y'all. Hide my honey. <laughs> I didn't plan this one well. Good gracious. And now I'm just gonna stick that on there. And I'm gonna turn my Instapot on high pressure and I'm gonna do it for 10 minutes. And that's it. So let me tell you about these drag queens and then I'll cut it off and we'll go back to fried green tomatoes. Y'all, it was the best show I have ever seen in my life. We saw Whitney Houston, we saw Pink, Lady Gaga, um, Reba McIntyre, Cher, Britney Spears. Lord, they were all out and they were flawless they were beautiful and they looked just like them and Reba y'all Reba she sang fancy and she took off that fur coat and she had on a big red fancy dress and she walked and when she like she turned her back on the audience and she walked and then she turned back and gave that look y'all but I lost my mind when Dolly Parton walked out she heard me. I have a picture of her looking directly at me because I screamed her name so loud. She heard me and she looked right at me. It was amazing. 
she came out, I think it was Whitney, they had done a tribute to Whitney Houston, and they let a dove fly in the air, and they were singing, I Will Always Love You, and it was beautiful. And the lights went down, and all of a sudden, a spotlight came over here on the side to a door. And that door opened, and there she was in this red dress with that blonde hair and these big old red lips. And she was singing nine to five. And y'all, I lost my mind, and Hillary lost her hearing. And it was wonderful. So that's my little story about the drag queens. And unfortunately, that, that show has closed down due to some scandal. Um, there was some drama among the queens and they had to close that show down. Otherwise, we'd be going there again this trip because let me tell you, y'all, it was wonderful. It's a wonderful trip. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to clean this off, throw all these scraps away, and I'm going to get my um, island set up to do fried green tomatoes. And we're going to bread these tomatoes and we're going to get to frying and then we're going to have a full meal. And I can't wait to eat. Well, we're back, and let me tell you, full disclosure, this is my absolute not favorite time of cooking. I hate deep frying anything, and I know y'all y'all saw my honey already. Y'all know I like to eat the deep fried, but I hate doing all this. I hate making all the different elements, I guess. <laughs> I was going to say batters. I mean, is that, I guess that's kind of what it is. Um, I hate it. It makes a mess. It stinks up my kitchen. I absolutely hate deep frying. And my husband loves for me to make fried chicken. And I do it like once a year. And I'll complain the entire time. I hate it. I hate doing this. But y'all, I got these tomatoes. And they're so, they're just perfect for this. And fried green tomatoes, that's something you eat in the South. I mean like from birth. Oh my goodness. Fried green tomatoes are bomb. So I've got my handy dandy buttermilk again. I've got two eggs. I don't know, there's a recipe. It'll be in the description. I gave up giving y'all measurements when I um, messed up the first go around <laughs> in the meatloaf. But y'all, I thought I had it wrong. I couldn't remember about the tomato paste and it was tablespoon and I was right. I was doing it from muscle memory, I guess. So, and then I add hot sauce. These are not gonna be spicy. My little husband would absolutely hate them if they were spicy, but this hot sauce, anytime you add, anytime you're making anything deep fried where you're doing an egg wash, add hot sauce. It gives it so much. Like it's, it just, it gives it something. I don't know, but it doesn't make it spicy. Y'all saw about how much I added in there. I just dumped a few little splashes. So anyway, I told y'all my Vegas story. That was six years ago. So back in 2019, my friend Hillary and I were talking about it, and we said, you know what? We should do a trip in 2020 for our five-year anniversary. So we booked it. We called my friend. I've got a girlfriend who is a travel agent, and we booked our trip, and we had it paid for. We, we started in 2019, and everything was paid for. Um, by like the summer and we were supposed to fly out um, in August of 2020. Thanks a lot COVID. COVID canceled our trip but because of that um, we have the insurance and we actually got a 30% credit um, to reschedule for 2021. So we did it because why not? And y'all this year oh my goodness we have so much going on. We're booked every night. We have shows and tours and I cannot wait. I'm so excited. And it is supposed to be like 110 degrees there. Like, I don't know if y'all have seen the weather out there. They're under an extreme heat, I guess, warning or watch, whatever, you know, like they don't have that here. <laughs> it does not get that hot, but it is going to be so hot. And so our days, you know, Vegas doesn't really come alive until nighttime. So our days are pretty well open, except, you know, we want to do things like sit by the pool and, you know, make, make the most of it. We don't want to be up all night and sleep all day. We want to like not sleep. <laughs> so we're doing this big anniversary trip and it's not, we don't have to work. You know, last time we had, we had to go to the hospital and work pretty much all day. Um, and then just try to make it through that sleepy and then stay up all night and, and really see Vegas. 
And so um, we're doing that this year and I'm so excited. I cannot wait. And I'm not going to lie. I'm still trying to lose like five more pounds. Um, and then I found out one of the things we're doing is it's like a tour where you walk to different restaurants, like the bougie restaurants, and they take you in as a VIP and you get like a small like sampling of one of their big, like biggest courses, I guess. So we eat at all these different restaurants for five hours. I am going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a food baby. And then they weigh you and you go for a helicopter ride. Isn't that the kicker? <laughs> so if I could just lose, you know, the five pounds, it would, it would take me to my goal, my, my goal of losing 30 pounds. And then I wouldn't feel quite so bad to step on those scales in front of a stranger after I've gorged myself on food all the good foods that Vegas has to offer that's what it said I'm really excited and last minute she and I were like we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this and we have all these plans now so I've been having to order all these like sequin dresses and <laughs> I'm just excited I'm excited to see her she does not live near me she lives in a different state I live in a different state and it's just we're meeting in Vegas and it's going to be, oh, it's going to be so great. So I'm not going to slice that tomato. Um, Y'all, I get carried away slicing and talking and it's going to take us forever. So I've got my egg wash. Oh, I'm going to do this. Hold on. I almost did this backwards. I got flour, regular old flour, egg wash, and then this, this is my breading. I don't know if y'all can see this. So normally the recipe calls for a little flour and a little cornmeal, but y'all, look what I did. Bam. I really don't know why I did this. I did this one time on a whim. I think I didn't have cornmeal and I, I had this and I was like, well, this has flour in it. I think, maybe, who knows? It tastes like it. They use all, yeah, it's got baking soda in here. It has, and salt. It's gotta have flour somewhere. Look how old I am. Yeah, I, I don't know what all those words are. So anyway, I got my cornmeal mix and I've got black pepper, salt, smoked paprika, cause that's what I like. Um, I've got garlic powder, I've got onion powder and y'all, the recipe called for seasoned salt and I didn't have any, but you know what I did have? I had some Old Bay seasoning. So that's what I used. It should taste the same or close to it. I mean, if you think about seasoned salt and Old Bay, Old Bay is just seasoned with a lot of salt, so it'll be fine. And normally you see people who do these little like breading stations, um, they use like pie plates. I cannot, st I, after I get a few of these breaded, you'll see, I, I want my batter, I want to whisk it. I want to be, you know, mixed up again so I can stick more in there, so stir my flour because it's been sitting there for a minute so now what you do is you take your tomato and honestly don't look at my butt don't look at my butt back there honestly I should have laid these out on a paper towel but it'll be fine they're not that wet just gonna pat it off and I'm gonna stick it here in the you can see that can't you I'm gonna stick it here in my flour all you're doing with the flour is you're basically giving um, a dry surface for this egg to stick to. So you can dust the flour off. It doesn't have to be on there very thick. As a matter of fact, if you have it on there very thick, it kind of messes with the, the breading of the, the cornmeal, like the true breading that you want. And y'all, this is messy. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe I do it messy. I don't know. I hate doing this though. And then I just take my hand. Can y'all see that? I'm pressing this cornmeal, oh y'all, this is gonna be so good. Pressing my cornmeal on this. Now, I grew up with my mama, it, she was always in a hurry, but she worked and she worked an hour away, so by the time she came home, it was just time to cook, time to eat, time to go to bed. So that's what she did, everything very quickly. So what she would do is if she was doing this, she would already have her skillet of oil going and she would take this and go over there and throw it in the skillet. I'm not going to do that. I'm laying it out on my cookie sheet because 
I want to be able to fry everything together. I don't want to have to stop breading because see how gross this, it gets all gummed up and then you have to wash your hands and you have to go over there and stir it or flip it or whatever. And then you have to come back over here and blah, 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 blah. And then wipe your hands off. And I don't do that. So I do everything in, at one time, which probably takes a little longer, but for me, it keeps me sane because like I said, this gets gummy and I try to only use one hand and I've seen people they've you know I've never seen anybody actually use them but they have like the tongs where you can take your food and you don't have to touch it you can take your little tongs and get it but I feel like that would just take the batter off you know so I don't do that so anyway all I'm doing now is I'm just going to keep doing this if I'm actually if you're lucky I can speed this up and you won't have to endure watching me slow poke around and we'll get these done and then by golly we'll start frying them oh this is gonna be so good Okay, y'all, that was perfect timing because my pressure cooker just did the beep beep. And I want to show you why this thing terrifies me, okay? Bear with me. When it goes boop boop, that means it's time to release the seal. <laughs> that thing scares me to death! <laughs> y'all see that? That's the steam coming out of there. Holy cow. So I'm gonna let that do its thing. I've got all of my tomatoes breaded. I'm gonna clean up my mess, and then I'm gonna move the camera over here to the stove and y'all are gonna watch me deep fry these green tomatoes and make this mashed cauliflower. Hold tight. All right, we're back. I've got my cast iron skillet and most people use vegetable oil. I am using peanut oil because that's Chick-fil-A changed my mind a long time ago. That's how I deep fry is with peanut oil. And all I'm doing, I've got my little breaded tomatoes here. And now that y'all are closer, I'm gonna show you. See that? Mmm, that coated, oh my goodness. I'm just gonna slide it in here. Oh yeah, there it goes. Anytime you're deep frying, well, depending on what you're deep frying, sometimes you want to hear the as soon as it goes in, but not with these. I want these to, because that batter, I mean, it's like a thick batter. It's got flour and cornmeal or, you know, cornbread mix. Um, and it's got the eggs and it's got the buttermilk in it. So I want it to kind of, um, you know, cook on there. I don't want to just flash fry it. I want it to really cook that's pretty crowded and now we just wait I don't know if y'all can see this or not but it's just frying them oh yeah can y'all hear that can y'all hear that pop and sizzle mm. and then we just kind of hang out now this is time consuming I know but I'm also going to check my meatloaf Y'all, I gotta tell you, so I'm old, I'm an old lady, and I have a hair in my mouth. I don't know what's happening now. And um, I decided to weed my flower beds yesterday, which is fine, and they look great. But y'all, oh, my old lady back. <laughs> my old lady back can't handle it. Oh, <laughs> it hurts. I was like, darn it, was it worth it? I mean, they look good, they look better. I have, uh, it's funny, I act like I don't like flowers, but I do like flowers. And I, for the most part, have um, flower beds with plastic in them, so I don't have to worry about weeding them, but, <clears throat> you know, sometimes little weeds pop up here and there. But I have one that's just wild. It's got irises and daylilies and hostas in it and a butterfly bush, and it just, it's wild. And, um... I don't want to put plastic down. I want the irises and the daylilies and, you know, everything to multiply. And sometimes it gets a little, a little weedy. So 
I got out there last night and I was weeding those flower beds and y'all I got on a fire ant's nest and I got bites on my toes I got bites on my arm look at this y'all I burnt my arm you see that I burnt my arm the other day in the oven getting something out and one of them ants spit me right on that <laughs> it hurts <laughs> So I was like, I may not weed my flower bed for a while now. I don't know if y'all can hear this popping and sizzling going on. You can't see it, but Lord, it looks good. The one thing you don't want to do is get your oil too hot, because like I said, you don't want to flash fry it. Plus, you don't want to burn it. You don't want these to taste burn. You want them to be crispy and, oh man, they'll be crispy on the outside and tender on the inside. And it's just so good. I love fried green tomatoes. This is definitely a staple in the South. We eat these things. Oh goodness. Oh yeah. I'm gonna flip it. We eat these things. Gosh, some people just sit down and eat them out of a bowl. I like to dip them in ranch dressing. But y'all, these are good on hamburgers. I don't know if you've ever had a hamburger with fried green tomato on it, but that's good. You got that deep fried crunch. Oh, and then that mater. Mm. Oh, yes. Yes. I don't know if I can. I've never done this before. Let me see if I can take you over here so you can see this. Don't mind me. Y'all see that? Look at those tomatoes. Look at that. Oh, y'all. Mmm. And there's just, I mean, this skillet isn't full of, of oil, but there's just enough in there to make them float. So they're floating around, and oh, they're just getting good. Y'all, mmm. Oh, this is going to be so good. So good with my meatloaf. Mm-mm-mm. Put you back down here where you can see. That was really good close-up of me, wasn't it? My, me and my chins. As I make some fried green tomatoes and tell y'all how to eat healthy. Come on now. So you have to do this, especially if you, if you have a garden and you've got a lot of green tomatoes, y'all fry them up. Like, I, we don't have a garden, but my girlfriend, she brought me some the other day and oh, I was so excited. I came home and that's what we had for dinner. We had fried green tomatoes and salmon and... Hi, Mommy. Hi, baby. How are you? Uh, He's downstairs. <laughs> he had his nap and he is raring to go. Oh, man, y'all. These are looking good. So I'm just going to stand here and fry them. Oh, man. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to fry these up, and then we're going to put them on, I have a baking sheet with, um, this is a cookie, like a cookie sheet that I have on there, but I'm just going to stick these on there to cool off and to drain, because I don't want them to be soggy. They'll drain any extra grease off, and I'll fry these other ones up, and then we're going to get this meatloaf out of the oven and put some... Um, ketchup on it and then I'm going to show y'all how to make the best mashed cauliflower so y'all sit tight I hope you're hungry all right y'all I just got these out of the oven um let me get my my little mittens here and I'll show you what they look like they're pert near done can you see that they pulled away from this side so I know that they're um, definitely they're almost there. They're still a little pink on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ice them with um, plain old ketchup. If you, the only reason I am not following my own instructions and mixing the ketchup and the brown sugar and the Worcestershire sauce um, is because we're doing keto and that brown sugar, it's, there's so much sugar in ketchup already. So um, I really don't want to add the sugar right now. But it's amazing. Try it. Try it because it's, gosh, that brown sugar mixed with that ketchup, it just caramelizes in the oven. Oh, it's so good. So all I'm doing is I'm just squirting it on each loaf. 
and then I spread it back down because you don't want it to be globbed up especially in one place you want this to um, you want to have an even layer so that as it bakes um, as it bakes it kind of makes like a little I don't want to say like topping but I guess it, it is it kind of bakes on there and so if you have it too thick in one spot it'll just be like raw ketchup when you bite into it but if you have it good and smeared out you're gonna have like a little layer of happiness <laughs> is that a thing a layer of happiness so all I'm doing is putting the ketchup on here smoothing it out and then I'm going to put it back in the oven and let it bake for, I don't know, five or ten minutes. Not too long. One thing about this pan, it's that thick stoneware, and you just can't hardly burn anything in these. I mean, I don't want to test fate, but these are just really good pans. There's certain things I absolutely have to have a stoneware pan for, and there's other stuff I have to have a metal pan for like cookies it's so funny so cookies I have to have stoneware biscuits have to be metal you'd think that's weird you're baking like dough but no no I have to have the stoneware on the cookies and the metal for the biscuits because y'all those biscuits whoo, those biscuits are bomb okay so I'm gonna pop these back in the oven and then we're gonna get started on our mashed cauliflower All right, so what I'm going to do now, just going to scoot that over. I have my um, Instapot from my, from my Ninja. It's still really hot, but I'm going to use it to kind of catch my water from the um, cauliflower. This is, of course, a Halloween theme because I, I, I use this for Halloween, yes, but um, I use tea towels to strain the excess water out of the um, cauliflower. And I like this one because it's so big. I mean, look at that, it's ginormous. So I'm just barely gonna press that in there. And here's my cauliflower. It's still dripping. Wow. Normally I do this over the sink, but because my camera's here, I'm doing it in front of y'all. Now see, look at that. Can y'all see that? When I dumped it out at the sink, it like, it's so pulverized. I mean, it's just, they look like they're whole florets, but they're not, it's pulverized. And I don't know if y'all hear my little Kappa in there just barking her heart out cause I'm tapping. So now what I'm gonna do, keep in mind this is hot. So be very careful doing this. I'm gonna take this. And y'all see that? Can y'all see that water coming out? I'm not really applying pressure and I'm trying not to touch it. I'm letting that squeezing do it for me. Cause like I said, I don't know if y'all can see the steam coming off of this. This sucker's hot. Hi, yay, yay. Hey, let me get my tongs. Hold on, you know my handy dandy tongs. I use my tongs for just about everything because I'm short, can't reach stuff. Now watch this. <laughs> y'all see that? Can y'all see that water coming out? Now see, that didn't strain out whenever you dumped it from the Instapot. Look at all that. You are going to be shocked when you see how much water was in this. And that's the part I highly dislike with mashed cauliflower because it's very wet. When I eat, I'm a country girl. I want something that's going to stick to my ribs and not make me hungry at 11 o'clock at night and make me regret going on a diet. And anytime I've had mashed cauliflower, because it's so wet, it's very thin, it doesn't stick to your bones. And I was like, how can I make mine not like that? So 
So here's what I do. I pulverize the living daylights out of it in the Instapot, and then I just squeeze all of that extra liquid out. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna do. Okay, y'all bear with me. I'm gonna scoot this into my sink and I'm gonna bring the pot over here and show you how I rake it out into the pot. So hang tight. All right, I just got this pot off the stove and I have been melting an entire stick of butter. Can y'all see that? I don't think you can. I have an entire stick of melted butter in here. That's really the only moisture that this cauliflower is gonna get um, because it is so wet and it just looks so gross, y'all. Oh, look, I'm dripping. Like I said, normally I put this over the stove or over the sink. Oh, y'all, I don't think you could see that. I'll bring my phone over. And I don't know if y'all can hear my little boy saying he needs Katy Perry. Doesn't everyone? Don't we all need Katy Perry? That is what it looks like. Is that not crazy? Look at that. It's pulverized cauliflower. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my mixer and I'm going to beat in a little salt and then I'll show you my little trick for making it creamy. Okay y'all, so I've got my mixer and I've put a little salt in here already. I'm using my kosher sea salt. No, it's just coarse kosher salt. Sorry. I have the Himalayan whatever salt over there, but it's like really big. I'm not a fan of it. Um, and so I'm going to use the laughing cow cheese. Someone actually told me about this, um, because it does add a little bit of creaminess in with this. Um, I'm using one of the creamy garlic and herb. So I'm going to use one of those. And because I did such a massive amount, I'm going to use two of the creamy and I bought light. You can use regular. Um, they're both fairly low in calories if that's what you're watching. I just thought the wrong thing. And then you're just going to scrape them in there. And because I've got that butter already melted, um, I don't know if y'all have used these. These these are just like creamier than cream cheese. Like they just dissolve whenever you um, whisk them in. So I've got one. Normally, I would use one garlic and one regular, like if I did just one head of garlic, uh, one head of uh, cauliflower. Now, unless you get a tiny, tiny little baby head like I got that one day for $3.99, then I would just use one, like pick one. And the garlic and herb, it really doesn't have a flavor, like it, it doesn't, it's not very strong. It doesn't have that garlicky, like we're at the Olive Garden, oh my goodness, it doesn't have that flavor. It's just, um, you know, it adds a little something. I like, when I cook, I like for all of my food to have different, I guess, depths of flavor. Like I season every little step, you know? So like if I'm making spaghetti, I don't just wait till the end to season the sauce. I season it from the time I cook the meat throughout and then finish it off. So that's, that's what I like to do here. I mean, that's what I'm doing in my meatloaf. I do that with pretty much everything. Um, I'm going to use my whisk attachment because I think y'all already saw that these suckers are just <laughs> completely pulverized. And my, um, I think I told y'all I have a gas stove. So every time I cook, everything gets hot. Like my handles, <laughs> everything, spoons, anything I have sticking in my pot will get super duper duper hot. Um, and the reason I like the whisk attachment too is because, is because it's going to make everything really silky. So if you've had mashed cauliflower, it's thin and it's got a very silky taste to it, like a silky texture. And when you squeeze out all that liquid, of course you're making it feel thicker, but it's still got that silky texture to it. Um, and it, it just, it whips up so well. That one's okay. Look at that. It's almost like mashed potatoes. 
Isn't that cool? Um, and now I'm going to add my sour cream. I don't know what it is about sour cream. It gives it, I don't know, it just gives it a good flavor. And I'm not measuring. I'm just adding. I basically add until my little old great-great-grandma, her spirit comes down and says, yes, child, that's enough. That's how we cook down here. We just cook with feeling like, oh, that's enough. I feel it in my bones. I feel it in my bones. <laughs> and what this um, sour cream is going to do, it's going to improve the texture. So it's going to be silky, but it's still going to give it like a, a whipped taste. Like a, you know, it's, it's going to be a really good sub for um, the mashed potatoes that I'm used to. That's odd. Hey, watch this. This side isn't. No, pop that around. Um, plus that sour cream is going to give it that, I don't know, I don't want to say it's a flavor that reminds you of mashed potatoes, but it does because if you have baked potatoes or if you have loaded mashed potatoes, I do really good loaded mashed potatoes where I use butter and cheese and sour cream and a little teensy bit of ranch and oh my gracious. So it's very reminiscent of potatoes, but it's also going to add that, that whipped creaminess. Um, so it's not just silky, like it's got some substance, like stick to your ribs goodness. And so these really are like fake mashed potatoes. Oh my. Y'all, look at these. Here, let me get my spoon in here. So you can really see. See how thick these are? I mean, they're still thin. But y'all. That is like mashed potatoes. And can we all just give me a standing ovation for not spilling it as I plopped it? Because that, that took some skill. Holy cow. So these are going to be good, especially with that. Oh, my gosh, that meatloaf. Oh, I love to take my, oh, that's hot. <laughs> oh, I love to take my meatloaf. And, of course, it's got that ketchup on it. And you bite down. And because it's the little loaves, you have like four individual pieces. And I'm going to get one of those end pieces that's going to, you know the crunchiness around it because I love those edges and I'm gonna take my fork and I'm gonna get me some meatloaf and I'm gonna slide over here and dip it in this mashed cauliflower and it's gonna be just like regular meatloaf and mashed potatoes and I'm not gonna lay in bed at nine o'clock tonight like oh, I hated that food I'm so hungry I want a candy bar you know because I have done that many times um so like I said if you are not dieting look at that oh if you are not dieting and you can have mashed potatoes, do mashed potatoes. We're doing keto and we do a lot of mashed cauliflower and y'all, these don't make me mad. Like I'm not mad at these. Once I learn how to cook them, you know, thick. Thick like me. How do you like your mashed cauliflower? Thick like my thighs. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so I'm gonna slide these back over here and I'm actually, I've made some mashed potatoes for my granny and papa. And I'm going to um, drain those and mix those up like I would my mashed cauliflower. And then I'm going to be ready to take the meatloaf out. Stay tuned. All right, y'all. I got these suckers out of the oven. I'm going to try to tilt it. Can y'all see that? Look at that meatloaf. I'm excited. And I stole one of my fried green tomatoes. Mmm. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the crunch. These are crispy. And they're so good. Oh, man. Oh, they're good. Mmm. 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 <laughs> can y'all hear me? Look at this. That tender tomato on the end. Oh, I'm sorry, on the inside. Mmm, and then that, mmm, that batter, y'all, mmm, oh, this is good, this is real good, I'm not going to make you watch me eat a plate, but I did want to eat one of these, mmm, <laughs> they're so good, a little greasy, mmm, y'all, you got to try this, if you don't try anything I made tonight, other than the fried green tomatoes, you got to. They are that good. They are slap your mama. So good. 
Oh my goodness. Uh, let me just bring them over here. Look at this. Look at these. Are they not gorgeous? They're still dripping a little grease. And they're still pretty warm, but oh. Mm, Y'all, so good. This family is gonna be happy with their food tonight. I've got the mashed cauliflower for us. Turn my, my eye down a little bit. I've got mashed cauliflower for us and I'm gonna take my little papaw and granny, some fried green tomatoes and some meatloaf and some real mashed potatoes that I just made for them. And we're just gonna eat high on the hog tonight. So y'all, make it, taste it. Tell me what you think. Cause this meal, this is like straight home Southern cooking. And if y'all make everything I made tonight, you're gonna be, oh my goodness, you're gonna be such happy campers. So do it, make it, taste it, tell me what you think. Um, leave any suggestions um, for me in the comments. Be sure you subscribe to the channel uh, because you just never know when I'm gonna show up. And um, like I said, if you have suggestions, leave them in the comments, send me a message on Facebook, email me, whatever you need to do. Let me know and I will make this for you because the chances are uh, I'm already cooking it. So y'all take care and have a happy day.